What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Before I get started on the video, just want to let everybody know that tonight at about 9 o'clock, we're going to be starting a little bit earlier than normal. Going to be over on Bad Dogs channel for our weekly show, Talking Giants. That'll be about two hours. We'll answer all your questions. We'll talk, I'm sure, about some of the things that came out today as the New York Giants another day, another offensive line. And the New York Giants continue to try to rebuff this offensive line, try to bring in more and more depth as they brought in their three, their third, rather, straight interior offensive lineman in the matter, I think, of three days. They, of course, traded for Billy Price. Then they brought in Ben Bredesen. And now they bring in Matt Skura, who's been a center. He's been in the league for a bit, played with the Ravens. We all remember him struggling in that playoff game last year, struggled in terms of snapping the football. But he's had, I think, over 50 starts well in the NFL. We'll, get over, we'll go over all the notes. And he does have ties to Daniel Jones. Both of them played at Duke. He actually was Daniel Jones' center, at least for a year, well at Duke, but he's been in the league now for about four or five years. So, I, you know, again, it's another body that the New York Giants could add. Certainly, at least, I think, matches what Jonathan Harrison would have brought to the table. And it's very possible at some point in time, Skur or Billy Price could be starting at the center when you see some of the things that came out today. Of course, we're all still a little worried about Shane Lemieux with some of the news that's come out as of late. Um, word is he's going to try to play on that injured knee, but if he can't, it could potentially require surgery. And if he is forced to miss time, well, that is when the New York Giants will have to decide whether or not to, you know, possibly play Bredesen at the guard, shift Gates to the guard, or and put possibly a guy like Skur or Billy Price in at the starting lineup at the center position. And today, and we're going to get into it, the Giants actually had Nick Gates playing at the guard position. They had him playing at the guard position the day before as well. Now, it's very possible they're preparing for a worst-case scenario circumstance, um, or it's possible they want to leave all their windows open if Shane Lemieux is not ready to go, figuring out what's the best lineup, whether it be Gates at the guard, um, and like I said, a guy like Billy Price or a guy like Matt Skura at the center or keeping Gates where he is and going with Bredesen at the guard position. And I'm sure the New York Giants hopefully will use these next 10 days to figure out exactly what they're going to do on that offensive line week one against the Denver Broncos. It remains a huge question mark for this football team. In addition to that, we're going to talk about Saquon Barkley. Barkley ramped it up a bit. We all remember that Joe Judge said that Barkley needs to get some contact in before he's ready to go week one. Well, in fact, that did happen today. We'll pull up some of the quotes with that as well. And Kenny Galladay actually spoke about the offense and some of his worries going into the year. And we're going to start with that. Um, there are a couple of quotes coming out from Dan Duggan. Galladay was asked about his role in the offense. He was out there today as well. All the uh, weapons were out there, right? They've all been missing time. Tony was out there. Galladay was out there. Barkley was out there. Uh, good to hear there. Evan Ingram sat out, I believe, today. Was on the sideline catching some balls, I think, but didn't really participate in the practice. But Galladay did talk about how he may be a little bit behind. Here it is. Kenny Galladay said he's getting better, but was quick to point out he's only been back practicing for a day and a half. He had hamstring injuries in the past. He said they can be tricky, so you have to be patient. Galladay said the injury was definitely a little bump in the road in building chemistry with Daniel Jones. Galladay said he's excited about the offense, but mentioned there could be a slow start because players have been in and out of the lineup. And I, you know, I've kind of been hinting towards this and warning towards this in some of my live streams and I just think it's common sense I completely agree with what Galladay had to say of course I hope this offense comes out and they look like the 2000 Rams and they go out there and they're putting up 40 50 points but the fact of the matter is Canaries Tony hasn't played in a preseason game Galladay hasn't played in a preseason game Barkley hasn't played in a preseason game their top weapons have not played they haven't built chemistry with Daniel Jones and you're going up against two elite defenses to start the year it's becoming more and more apparent that the New York Giants are going to have to rely on the ground attack and rely on their defense to get them out with a W against Denver and potentially uh, Washington just four short days later. That's not to say that they're not going to take some shots down the field, but I do think it'll be a conservative approach on offense the first two weeks. Expect this defense to be well ahead of the offense to start the season. This then coming out from Doug, and I wanted to briefly talk about this. It, it was an awesome video. I actually retweeted it on Twitter. Um, where Patrick Graham was talking about Lorenzo Carter and how excited he is for him this year and how he thinks he's going to improve. Um, so I definitely suggest taking it. It's about a minute clip, so definitely check that out if you are on Twitter. But this is what Duggan had to say. Patrick Graham nearly got emotional talking about Lorenzo Carter. 
Graham said he's very proud of Carter's development. Said he looks like a different player this season. And I don't want to get super excited about Lorenzo Carter. We do this to ourselves every single year. But regardless, I think he's a guy that last year before the Achilles injury showed you that he fit the scheme. He's versatile. You can use him in several different ways. And he's a guy I'm really rooting for this year. And if the Giants defense is going to take a next step up, he's definitely going to have a lot to do with it. So great things coming out from Patrick Graham talking about Lorenzo Carter. Then this on the offensive update, some of the players that played today coming out from Stapleton, Barkley, Galladay, Shepard, Slayton, Tony, and Rudolph, all working in full pads during media viewing period. Now, the media wasn't able to view the entire practice. That's why he, you know, said that, the media viewing period. But they were all out there outside of Evan Ingram, who's looking more and more doubtful, potentially, for week number one. This coming out from Rosenblatt. Saquon Barkley took his first shots and hits of training camp today. Crucial step towards a possible week one return. And Joe Judge has not come out and concretely said that Barkley's going to play. You expect that. Comes from Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick is not going to show his hand. Uh, but regardless, I think it's definitely trending that way. I don't know how many touches he's going to have week one. It'll be interesting to see how the New York Giants use him in the offense. But I definitely expect him, at least at this point in time, to be starting week one for the New York Giants or at least be involved in some way, shape, or form. He just looks like he's 100%. He went on to say he feels basically like he's 100%. So I think he's going to be out there for the Giants. And, of course, Judge came out about a couple of weeks ago and said that he was going to need some contact before the season got going. Well, today he started to get that contact. This coming out from Saquon Barkley. I feel really good right now, the running back said, after Thursday's practice. So great news there from Barkley. Like I said, expect him to be out there opening week. This coming out from Jordan Renan. The Giants are expected to sign offensive lineman Matt Skura to the practice squad per source. Another interior lineman has played for the Ravens and Dolphins, brings experience. He has 51 career starts. He's been a starter each of the last four seasons. And some hits and misses with him. He's not the greatest, uh, you know, center. It's why he became available. But definitely a guy with some experience and a guy that could provide his valuable depth and potentially could start um, if the New York Giants decide to ship Nick Gates. But that remains to be seen. I would think it would be a battle between him and Billy Price if they do that. I'm not super in favor of shifting Gates. I don't like doing that, being that Jones has a full year now used to taking snaps from Gates, the whole preseason used to taking snaps from Gates. So I would like to think the Giants won't have to go that route, but anything is possible. Of course, Gates has experience playing both the center of the guard and the tackle position, so he is a versatile offensive lineman. This I wanted to pull up as well. This was just in the preseason, but this is what PFF had to say, PFF New York Giants. Matt Skura played well this preseason. His 84 pass block grade ranked fifth among centers. Now, that could be circumstantial. I don't know if he was going up against second and third team defenses, but regardless, he graded out well in preseason according to PFF ranks. His best season came in 2019 with a 68.7 overall grade. So I think that's both run and pass blocking combined, which is a pretty good grade. Actually, that's a higher grade than... Uh, what Nick Gates had last year, for example, at the center position for the New York Giants. But I think he then suffered an injury and was not the same player in 2020. Then this, finally coming out from Rosenblatt. Offensive line coach Rob Sales said Nick Gates got some reps at guard yesterday and seems like he'll be getting more too. So I wanted to make note of that. Um, and we're going to wrap it up yeah, after that in terms of the notes. Andrew Thomas sat out today as well. Um, don't read too much into that. Joe Judge has picked, the, you know, picked his spots here and there with certain players when he feels like they need a rest day. It sounds like they did that there today. Solder started on the left side. Parrott started on the right. But expect, obviously, Andrew Thomas to be your starting left tackle at the beginning of the year. As far as Gates goes, we'll have to wait and see. It could just be, you know, Judge trying to see how he looks at the guard position. They're trying to figure out the best five-man allotment and I definitely think it's very possible that Shane Lemieux will not be able to give it a go the whole season if at all and we're gonna have to wait and see hopefully he will but you have to think some of the moves that the New York Giants have made here over the last three days it's been overkill with the interior offensive lineman is at least insurance that they think it's at least a reasonable possibility that Shane Lemieux could be hampered this year due to the knee injury but we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out do I think with Lemieux out of the lineup it's a catastrophic event for this offensive line no not really if I'm being honest with you Shane Lemieux last year in terms of pass protection was god awful he was rated the worst you know pass blocking guard in all of football last year so I, I don't think it's a huge loss but at the same time it's still somebody that had some chemistry with the members of this offensive line it's still somebody that they expected to be a part of it and the New York Giants if he's on it not ready to go um or suffers an injury from within the season 
will have to find a way to push forward with the men that they have on this roster. And I think that's clearly the reason why they went out there and they, you know, they got some more proven commodities on the offensive line. Skur is one of their most experienced offensive linemen on this line at this point. Outside of uh, Nate Solder, you look around this line, he's probably got more, more starts than Will Hernandez or right around the same. Obviously, has more starts than Thomas Parrott, so he's one of our more experienced linemen. Guys like Billy Price that we brought in don't necessarily have the experience, but they have some more of the upside. So I think it's a good blend of both with some of these linemen that they've brought in. Hopefully, I get to see some of you guys tonight. And as always, if you like what you watch, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.